the last of this little series and the least negative. Cathay, how do I think they're going to perform with the DLC? Well, let's go through the units real quick. The Celestial General is cool. Originally seeing his extremely low price point with high stats, I was worried he was going to be wildly OP. He is it. He's strong. He's strong. He's good. I actually expect to see him in a couple builds here and there. I like him. He's a good implementation to the game, a good use of a melee lord. Um, his Celestial Sweep is like Deathmaster Snitch's spin. You know, somehow it feels like it does less damage than the Deathmaster spin, despite the crazy stats. So ignore the stats. It's a good spin move. He has a really nice uh, AoE buff for some friends nearby, and he has some leadership stuff. His extremely cheap price point is probably going to be his drawing factor. Um, strong Combat Lord. I like him a lot. He's pro he, like I would rather give him nerfs than buffs, but I would... If you know, if you ask me, I would leave him alone and see how the meta plays out. He looks good. Yumbo is a big topic of community discussion. I expect to see him. I don't expect to be terrified of him. Yumbo suffers from a lot of problems that makes his obvious strengths the only thing keeping him alive. So. Yembo has a passive called Executioner somewhere. There it is. Anything that falls below the 20% threat threshold will die if he touches it. Um, that's true, but it doesn't work when he's in his dragon form, so he has to be human trying to catch whatever single entity is. So that's not exactly amazing. His 10% damage resistance is fine. Leadership and ITP for everybody around him is fine. No problems there. The Dragon's Fang is some pretty obvious power creep. For one item worth 200 gold... 75% damage uh, increase flat out and plus 40 melee attack. Let's take a look at someone else who has a 200% uh, sorry, 200 gold item. Where am I looking? Let's go with Bretonia. Fuck it. Fey Enchantress. Favor of the Fey is 150 and only has the melee attack portion of that. Chalice Potions is also 200. Parade of Borlo is 200. I don't know. It feels like really overtuned for a 200 item, but fine. Rolling Skies sucks ass. It's a terrible lore passive. Lorvian is fine, but it only affects people directly around you, so it also sucks for lore passive. Archie Conduit's okay. And the Emperor's Executioner is the big thing everybody's talking about. It does a lot of fucking damage. I will not deny that. It's very, it's very strong. Very, very strong. So some of his items, quite strong, very expensive. Emperor's Executioner, strong. His spell kit is also mixed. Jade Shield is okay. Blossom Wind sucks last time I ever checked on it. Maybe it got buffs. Talons of Night is good for clearing out hordes. Shem's Burning Gaze still sucks. Net of Amatok is amazing. It's what everybody's talking about. Netting things in front of Iron Hail Gunners. And Common of Cassandora can clear out infantry and stuff. So that all sounded real good. The negatives that I don't think will make him a huge problem is he is wildly expensive. Even if you take off all of his spells, I mean, if you take, like, two, he's going to be 2,750 gold without healing, because there's no no healing for him outside of, I guess you would have to take Felix, too. So there's no healing for this guy. His spell kit and his stated objective are wildly at odds. He doesn't have any single target sniping spells. He doesn't have Spirit Leech, he doesn't have Harmonic Convergence, he doesn't have Enfeebling Foe. He has nothing to help him with the duel besides Jade Shield to protect himself, but doesn't deal more damage. Uh... And Ned of Amatoc, I guess, to keep his fight, his opponent in the fight. But, like, he has a bunch of crowd control spells, clearing out mass amounts of infantry. So his spell kit doesn't synergize with the rest of his kit, which is weird. And he's a terrible fucking duelist. This guy has more jank in him than I can, I've can. i ever seen an entire character. I, I, I don't know what order the videos are going to come out here, but I... I can't get him to fucking hit anything. So his executioner stats are entirely wasted because his, his model is so broken that he can't get any damage done. He has non-armor-piercing weapon strength. Oh, wait. Sorry. He has armor-piercing weapon strength. That was hovering over our barrier for some reason. Um, Queek Headtaker, without any items or abilities, almost fucking killed him when I was trying to test the Executioner's thing. So I used the Executioner's thing on Queek, and Queek still almost won. That's how fucking jank this guy is in melee combat. So between the wildly expensive price point, the asynergistic spells plus abilities, uh, and his, his horrifically jank model, I don't think he's going to be much of a problem. I, I had issues making him useful, rather than I had issues with him being too strong. <laughs> I haven't seen him win yet.
Uh, moving on from him. So he was a big talking point. Celestial Draenial, good. Him, mixed. I expect to see him. I don't expect him to be a problem. Uh, I, there's been some misinformation out there. The grace of Ji, uh, Kwai Ji, wait, Ji Yin, Kwai Yin, whatever. The mark of Yin is not area of effect. That is, that is incorrect. It is a single target. So it's like, it's, it's, it's literally copy pasted mark of, marked by Ulthar from, uh, the dwarves. It only affects one target. It's still good, but it's not AoE. Like I heard people talking about that. Uh, the Jade and Jet Lions, honestly, I have positive things to say about them. I thought, and they could still be used in an extremely toxic fashion, but we'll get to that. As far as monsters go, they're surprisingly squishy in melee combat. Um, they do decent damage. They're kind of like foot manticores. They have some interesting support abilities. Jade Lion's Breath isn't that good, uh, but more Winds of Magic is, of course. And the Jet Lion, um... Disrupted is decent versus demons. Missile Mirror was fun to use a couple times. And Spell Resist for everybody around him is probably a little too strong. But as, as units, they're actually pretty squishy. Uh, they're, they're viable. They are mortal for some reason. So they're not unbreakable or disintegrate. They will just run away from a fight. Which I find weird that a living statue would run away from a fight. But sure, that's fine. I don't actually have that many issues with it. Um, the problem could be with blobs because of this. The lions, one of them gives, the jade lion gives yang, which all melee units give the yang, the harmony. But the, the jet, jet lion could be a problem. It also is unfortunately the one that provides the spell resistance. So everybody around it gets spell resist, which makes infantry harder to clear out. They get yin harmony, which you previously needed a vulnerable missile unit to provide yin. Now you can have a large single entity provide yin for your whole blob. Um... And Missile Mirror, so if anybody shoots at you, you can cast a spell on them that will re redirect their shots. So if you're casting spells to clear out the blob, good luck, Spell Resist. If you're shooting missiles to clear out the blob, good luck, Missile Mirror. Um, and the blob is stronger due to the yin harmony that it gives everybody. So that one's probably stupid. I haven't seen it too much, and I do have positive things to say about it at the end of this critique. But for now, the jet line might be problematic. The Onyx Crowmen are a pleasant surprise. They're probably a little too good for their price point, but they are the best flying unit I have encountered. Um, the Nangal Grenades are incredible. The ROR Empress Crowmen are going to be amazing. Just completely amazing. Uh, I love these units. While they are probably slightly too strong, I do think they are more fun to interact with than a lot of what Cathay brings to the table. So I think even your enemies will be happy if you take Crowmen. Uh, rather than just hard boxing. So the Crowmen are good, but again, they could have a little toxic element to them that we'll get to later. And then the War Drums. I think the War Drums are the most overrated thing. Like, people are freaking out about them, and I just don't see it. 1,100 gold for a bad melee combatant. It is unbreakable. It provides both yin and yang harmonies, but you can already get the Jet Lion to provide yin, and yin's all you need. Uh, Icon of the Great Cities gives some more leadership for everybody around them. And then you can get melee attack and immune to psychology or more armor. You can't get both. You can't do both at the same time. They switch off like Festus uh, like Festus switches off between healing and damage. They switch off between these. So you're paying 1,100 for plus 24 armor, yin, and plus 8 leadership. Or for 8 more melee attack, ITP, 8 more leadership, and yin. It, 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 it's not that good, unfortunately. It's not terrible, but it's not that good. Especially because the, it would be much more useful if the Jet Lion didn't exist. But the Jet Lion exists, and he just does what you want this to do. If you want this to make your blob more horrendous, the Jet Lion is just like better at that. So, yeah. Uh, uh, the positive I can say about it is with the Celestial General, honestly, even Yen uh, Bo, the Onyx Crowman and the Lions melee rush for cafe is much more of a thing like you can get the jet lion to run out and give harmony bonus to your jay lancers making them actually good cavalry units that is quite nice and you can get the jet lion to give the harmony bonus to your melee attackers if you wanted to like rush the enemy so that's also quite good i have been using the jet lion a lot i think he's i think he's pretty solid the problem is exactly what you think it is this also could lead you to just hard box even even more and then you don't need range units like if your only range units get taken out um you can use the jet lion or the jengju uh jengu war drum to just give your whole box the harmony stat buffs 
And that's pretty fucking annoying. Also, now this roster has a net in Yumbo. So even if you're not hard boxing, if you go super wide with Kithe, they now have a net to just net down whatever was disrupting them and shoot it to death. I don't think Kithe is going to be Zinch tier of problem, but I do think they're going to be very difficult. So far in the early access, I've been having issues as Kithe fighting against shooting and Zinch. So Zinch counters them right now in my experience. Um, the Kislev counters them because you have armor piercing stalked kite just running around and if you ever leave your box to go deal with them you get preyed on by the things in the woods. So against Kislev you'll have to go like full rush but even then I don't know if that's going to work because Kithay's rush is pretty limited. Uh, so there are counters definitely but this it feels like they're bad match. The matchups that are bad against Kithay are just going to get worse. Because if they blob on you, they're going to blob even fucking harder. Like, for example, Slanesh. What's Slanesh going to do? Slanesh used to be able to at least suicide dive the ranged units, get rid of the harmony. And then if you get rid of the harmony, you can kill them. It, there's That's not going to happen. <laughs> that's just never going to happen now. Good luck. Going to have a jet lion running around giving everybody the harmony buffs. And then you'll just get outstatted and ground down. So, <sighs> Rip. Rip. But this is, for me, the least problematic of the three DLCs. Um, this probably is also coming out last, but yeah, Zinch is SS plus tier. They're better than Cathay for sure. And Kislev, while they might not be better in the meta than Cathay overall, I think their DLC is more problematic for what I talked about there. So if that video is not out, look for it. Uh, Cathay is the least problematic. They just, they got units that help their current playstyle. They got units that also can encourage them to do other things. So, yeah. I mean, I wish this faction wasn't nearly as fucking strong as it is. They're way overstated in general. But the DLC isn't gonna do that. Like, even if you don't buy the DLC, Cathay will still be Cathay. They'll still hardbox and completely fuck you up that way. Right? This doesn't change that. It does give them the option of playing Cavalry Rush. But... Yeah. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.